terms of sexual empowerment, uh, a woman, even if she has more submissive sexual fantasies than dominant uh, fantasies, she can still be very empowered around her sexuality. And if she's not empowered around her sexuality, bad things could happen. Um, she could date the wrong people mm -hmm. and her goals will not be fulfilled, whatever her goals are in terms of relationship, in terms of life in general. Mm -hmm. And that seems very true. I, I've uh, been guilty of this myself. I used to I do construction work as well as hosting shows like this. And I used to go to Home Depot all the time in my work clothes. And I used to load the two by fours myself to show them that I can do it myself. And then one day I thought, how stupid of me. You know, I can simply just put on a cute little outfit and go over there with my little Hello Kitty pen and my list. And all of a sudden, these guys are running up, what would you like, can I get? So I said, sure, you know, I'd like um, two by fours. And they said, well, how many? And I said, you know, 52. And they started loading them and <laughs> loading them, and they were happy to load them for mm -hmm. me. And I was happy that I didn't have to do it myself. But it's like a win-win situation. Um, I find that men just really want, in a relationship, to make the woman feel good or to make them happy. You know, so mm -hmm. if they ask you, where would you like to go to dinner? Come up with a couple choices. You know, give them a break. Let them know what you like so that they can please you. And then it, um, it just seems to me that is powerful. You don't have to push them down. You just bring them up with you. Very much so. Very, you agree? Yeah. I uh -huh. had a client recently. She said, you know, uh, often if I'm trying to empathize, I contort myself to be what I think my partner wants me to be. And I said, if you take the time to really concentrate on what makes you happy, to get solid in that, and then if you hit a bump in the road to see, I want that down there in the future. I want to be happy with him walking hand in hand in the sunset. How do I get there? And we go through this. And I said, it, it's not about, uh, she felt guilty for thinking about herself first. Oh. And the self-esteem, as you were talking about, um, I, I said, you know, you being your best in this relationship, and that means thinking about yourself first and doing the best thing for you is going to make you the best partner in this relationship. So think about what your priorities are, know where you want to get with him, mm -hmm. and work through the bumps. Right, and see and notice and recognize the good things in the relationship rather than focusing on, oh, I hate when he does that, or I hate, you know, whatever you focus on, you get more of. Yeah. So it's good to focus on the good things that he's doing. Now, uh, Dr. Hoff, I had a question. If someone is interested in power play or something that, a little unusual, how would they introduce that in a relationship? How do you ask your partner? Um, good communication helps. If it's a relationship where there is good communication between the partners, that would include sexuality. And it shouldn't be that difficult then to say, you know, I've been thinking about this. How do you feel about that? And see what the other person says. Um, a lot of people run into difficulty when a man who has submissive fantasies, which is very common, much more common than most people assume, wants to bring that into a relationship and his partner, his wife or girlfriend is not flexible at all in that regard. That happens a lot, unfortunately, you know. Is she not flexible because it's scary to yeah, her? Yeah, uh -huh. it's but scary th mm -hmm. that he's not a heroic male or the man that she married or the man she wants to be with, when in fact the a lot of the submissive men are very heroic. They really want to please and serve but it might not be what the woman has in mind. So that's where most couples run into difficulty. If a, a lighter fantasy gets introduced, that's usually not so much of a problem. Oh, honey, I want to play. We'll go to a bar and we pretend we don't know each other. That <laughs> might, uh, some people might have a problem with that too and because they feel uncomfortable. They don't feel like they can act. They feel it's stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I think one could bring it up just directly and if necessary look for a couple counselor who's open for that mm -hmm. and help the communication but it doesn't always work a lot of women don't want to have anything to do with that a lot of men don't want to have anything to do with certain types of role play mm -hmm. has to be a match and if it doesn't work it doesn't work then you have to think about is that relationship compatible is it important enough for me to stay in it when i don't get my sexual fantasies fulfilled and for a lot of people that's okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, I want to talk a little to you about Joy about uh, chemistry 
and connections because a lot of this isn't just you know hit and miss and meeting someone it has to deal with how your body and physicality and your chemistry reacts with the person just to play off a little bit about what dr. Hoff just said I have read a series of studies recently that when um, you're doing role play and let's say the the woman if it was a, a heterosexual couple um, is role playing that she's just had an affair or she's fantasized about another man that um, that in conjunction or if you've been away from your partner for a long time your uh, the sperm count is going to be greatly increased really? from, from 350 million sperm count to over 800 if you've seen each other less than 5% of the time in this last you know several days or something or like that. Or if you're imagining you're with a different partner. Yes. And Interesting. You, and you thrust, he thrusts deeper, it's more passionate and uh, it goes back to again the hunter and gatherer days. If a rival has come and slept with his woman, he wants to be able to get that sperm out of there and there's a way when he sh <laughs> thrusts that he's actually taking some of the rival's sperm out and so it gets back into that passion mm. play. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, th I, I think that's a very good point that uh, doing a little bit of role play can be so invigorating to a relationship when uh, a lot of couples who've been together for a long time and they love each other and want to stay together but the sex life often sucks. <laughs> that it's uh, the same routine and, and often uh, one partner or both partners lose some interest mm -hmm. so to to do a bit of a, a play it, there is a biological reality to it there's a psychological reality to it and you can uh, create a variety that makes it never boring now do you think if you keep it spicy and you do play and um, let their interests come out let your interests come out and work together that it's going to be something that will keep someone from being uh, unfaithful it could be I mean the more when uh, we had discussed this before, in the beginning of a relationship, you're chemically addicted to your partner. There's all these wonderful good body chemistry going on. And when you move uh, gradually into the, the attachment phase, uh, it changes a little bit. And so I always encourage people to think outside the box. Do something fun. Don't go to the same place all the time. Do something different with your sex life. By doing that, you're getting the extra hits of dopamine, norepinephrine in your system, endorphins. And a fun way to kind of set the mind frame is uh, they've done a lot of studies with smell. Smell is the first thing that hits your mind. So in the beginning or you've been together for years, creating a smell that's your smell, whether it be an incense or it be a particular candle or baking or cookies bacon. <laughs> or bacon or baking <laughs> cookies, but have that smell permeating when you're making passionate love. And so if somebody comes home prior to the other person and they're a little brandy <laughs> today, they light that candle, they burn that incense, and as soon as their partner walks in the door, they have that smell hit them and they're like, ah, oh, ah, oh, even before they're acknowledging that Is that like a Pavlov kind of yes. experience? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you you throw the cookies in the oven when he's coming home and then you make love while you're making the cookies, either you're going to burn the cookies <laughs> or else they're still going to be raw and you're going to need to try to make it last longer. Yes. So, so prolong it a little bit. Um, so when a couple, uh, let's say a woman wants to be a little bit more dominant, mm -hmm. what are little things that she can do uh, to test the water a little bit? Because